Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. It has been a picture-perfect first two months for Miguel Cabrera, hitting 367, 65 RBIs, 83 hits. All of those numbers first in the American League. Miguel Cabrera back in the middle of the Tigers lineup here tonight. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen back here at the ballpark. We welcome you. Game one in this series against the Tampa Bay Rays. And what do you know, Ron? Miguel Cabrera, the player of the month in the American League. We kind of figured that was going to be the, the case. You know, it's really refreshing that the rest of the country uh, is getting a chance to see just how good a uh, Miguel Cabrera is. And everybody out there really rooting for Miguel to win maybe another Triple Crown. All right, how about Anibal Sanchez? He'll go up against Matt Moore tonight. It's a terrific pitching matchup for Sanchez. His month of May has been outstanding, but you look at his numbers at home, they've been really good as well. He's awfully fun to watch, especially when he gets on a roll. Uh, this guy has a mid-90s fastball that he can really spot uh, to the right-handed batters down and away, and that's really why he's been so effective this year. It's been the command of his fastball. He also has a few other pitches uh, to go along with that heater, and because of that, uh, he just really pitches some of his best baseball right here at Comerica Park. Yeah, the other half of the pitching matchup tonight is Matt Moore for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's only 23 years old, one of the bright young prospects in the American League. Well, here's a guy that uh, if the season was at the halfway point, he probably would be starting of the All-Star game. Of course, he's auditioning for that. Jim Leland will manage uh, the American League squad, but he's got a fastball that will touch a 95. He's got an outstanding curveball, although he calls it a slider. Also, a really good changeup, mound presence, intestinal fortitude, you name it, Matt Moore has it. Really good young pitching prospect. One of the best left-handers in the game of baseball as we speak. We are looking forward to this series. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios and Trevor Thompson. But coming up in this one here tonight, Tory Hunter is in search of his 300th career home run. Will it come tonight? We'll find out next. Tigers and Rays coming up.
Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. It'll be Matt Joyce, Ben Zobrist, and Kelly Johnson in the top three spots. Longoria, Loney, and Jennings in the middle of their lineup. Luke Scott, Jose Molina, and Yunel Escobar, the bottom three for the Tampa Bay Rays. And they will face Anibal Sanchez, who is presented tonight by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. And he's making his 12 starts this year. One complete game for Sanchez. Checks in with a 500 record. Not a whole lot of run support because that 2.79 ERA is outstanding. 89 strikeouts in 71 innings. Boy, is he fun to watch when he gets on rolls like he did a couple of starts ago when he nearly threw his second no hitter. Well, Matt Moore just walking off the field and into the dugout. He has made Anibal Sanchez wait. And now Anibal finally throws the first pitch of the ball game, and it's a strike call to Matt Joyce. Sanchez could not have been too pleased with that as Moore finally makes it to the dugout. Joyce batting 266. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And it's lifted foul back out of play 0 and 2. Tampa Bay Rays in town. They are 31 and 25, and in the thick of the race in the American League East, Joe Madden has a team this year that again has good pitching, but they've been better offensively this year. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he went around. Tim Welke rings him up, and Joyce is out of there. One gone. Anibal Sanchez wasted very little time going after Joyce, and Joyce probably, yeah, boy, that wasn't Ooh. concrete there. It was close. It was close. One up, one away. Three pitches into this game. We have one out. Here is Ben Zobrist, batting 246 this year. And Zobrist swings on the first pitch and skies this one in the air to shallow center. Avisail Garcia is under it. Two gone. Let's take a look at the defensive alignment here for the Tigers this evening behind Sanchez. Tuyasa Sopo gets to start in left. Garcia in center field. Torrey Hunter, he's back out in right. Miggy Peralta, Infante, and the Prince in the infield. And Brian Pena uh, getting the start here tonight against the left-hander, Matt Moore. Left-hander also means Tuyasa Sopo he is out there in left field. Got the shades going early on in this one. Sunlight in center field and left field. Shadows covering the infield, and a strike is called on Kelly Johnson. Johnson batting 280, but in his career just 091 versus Detroit. And how about Sanchez coming out throwing nothing but strikes? He is six for six to start the game. Here's the 0-2. Missed it outside. One ball, two strikes. Sanchez is in search of his sixth victory of the season. ERA of 2.79 coming into play. Two and two the count. Johnson batting a solid 280 despite the fact that he's two for his last 17. And Sanchez just missed, and now the count fills the three and two. After getting ahead of Johnson, no balls, two strikes, back-to-back changeups, which he missed on, then a breaking ball that he missed on as well. Wave and a miss, didn't miss there, and Johnson is out one, two, three inning. Torrey Hunter will bat second, looking for his 300th home run.
He hit in search of that 300th career home run. The Tigers starting lineup today presented by the Southeast Michigan four dealers. It'll be Infante Hunter and Cabrera as your top three. Fielder is cleaning up then Victor Martinez and Johnny Peralta. Bottom three tonight features Tuiasa Sopo, Brian Pena and Abisail Garcia. And they are facing the left-handed offerings of Matt Moore. Moore's got some outstanding stuff. His walks are down this year. He walked 81 batters last year, only 28 uh, so far this year. Fastball will touch 95. Real good curveball and an exceptional changeup by Matt Moore. Well, it would behoove the Tigers to get to him early. Eight runs allowed in the first inning. But from innings two and beyond, the ERA is a microscopic 1.24. So we'll see if the Tigers can get to him quickly here. Omar Infante leads it off. Batting 294 with three home runs this year. And 18 driven in. First pitch from Moore is down the middle of strike 0 and 1. Tigers continue to mix and match with that leadoff slot and Fonte gets the call tonight with the lefty. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Strike call 0 and 2. Moore used to be one of those guys when he came up a couple of years ago whose fastball uh, was about 97 miles an hour. Uh, no longer does he get there, but he commands uh, that 91 to 93 pretty good. He was born in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, but grew up in New Mexico. Let's see, New Mexico High School Player of the Year. He is ahead of Infante 1 and 2. And Omar takes slow two balls two strikes. He was also headed uh, to college in New Mexico until uh, the Rays paid him a lot of money. Now they 2 2 swing and a miss out front and out number one. Tim Hortons will sponsor the starting defense for the Tampa Bay Rays this evening in the outfield is Johnson Jennings and Joyce Longoria Escobar Zobris and James Loney in the infield and Jose Molina behind the plate today. Two of the three Molina brothers still going strong. Yadier and Jose. Here's Torrey Hunter. Strike one to Torrey. Yadier was kicked out of a game a couple of days ago. Boy, did he blow a little mini gas. I saw that. I think he drew a one game suspension for that. That one missed by Moore. One ball, one strike. I'm surprised he didn't get more than that the way that he was acting. Torrey batting 316, 11 game hitting streak going right now. Waves and misses, one and two. Moore only features three pitches. It will be the fastball that he'll touch 95 with today. Uh, he's got a breaking ball that looks like a curveball, but he calls it a slider. And he's got a change up that he threw to Infante to get strike three. Busted him inside with a 94 mile an hour fastball. His changeup is a plus plus pitch. That means really good. <laughs> and for those of you wondering, here's the 2 2 pitch. Bouncing ball foul. Hey, and a souvenir. Nice snag with the glove. Old glove, too. Looked yeah. like he may have used that one when he was in Little League. Here's the 2 2, but now Torrey steps out. He's given time by home plate umpire Chris Conroy. Moore is only 23. Spent his first full season in the big leagues last year, won 11 games. Torrey follows it straight back. Hunter, of course, missed a couple of games in Baltimore, attending the graduation of his sons. And so he came back on Sunday, had a couple of hits. Shattered bat rolled toward third where Longoria has it. And Torrey is out. Sought his bat right in half. Two gone. That'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. Player of the month in the American League for the month of May, surprising absolutely no one. Got 11 career home runs against the Rays. Cabrera batting 367. Yeah. 
Swing and a miss. 93. At about the belt. 0 and 1. I guess those numbers will get you player of the month right there. 12 homers, 33 driven in, and nearly a 380 batting average. Wave and a miss again. There's another fastball. 12 home runs in a single month. Cabrera's numbers are just uh, hard to quantify anymore. But Moore has been able to throw two fastballs by him, 0 and 2. That's fouled straight back. Cabrera has won the Player of the Month award three times in his career, all three times now with the Tigers. He's batting here with two out, nobody on, no score. We're in the bottom of the first at Comerica Park. Tigers back home to take on the Rays. Ball inside, one, two. So more featuring nothing but fastballs here to Cabrera. And a ground ball left side base hit. Two out single. Should have stayed with a fastball maybe. Well he thought he had him set up but he made a mistake with his breaking ball. And Molina wanted the ball down in the dirt but Tamora got the ball up and of course uh, that is one of his hot zones Biggie. One of many hot zones. So Cabrera now having a chat with first baseman James Loney. Here is Prince Fielder. We've talked about this a lot, Rod, but it's just so interesting how different teams just have different approaches. On the road trip, they played fielder to pull. They had three defenders to the right of second base at times, and this is pretty much straight up. You know, Joe Madden's been doing something that's really wacky, though, with some of the left handed batters. Not doing it here, but once a big slugger like Prince is in the batter's box, he'll leave Longoria right where he's at for the first pitch. And if the pitcher throws strike one, then he'll take Longoria, move him all the way on the other side of second base, and he'll take Unail Escobar, the shortstop, and put him right back at his regular position. With one strike. <laughs> That's unconventional, to say the least. And the reason why he does it, and he may not do it with Prince, because Prince, Prince never bunts. But some left-handers, like a David Ortiz, we've seen Carlos Pena do it. When you play that shift on him, sometimes guys will take the liberty of bunting on the first pitch. Prince, I don't think I've seen him try to bunt at all since he's been in the uniform. No, I can't recall him doing that. So he may not do it with Prince, but he's been doing it with some of the other left-handers. The 2-1. A little bit high. Three balls, one strike. He did it a couple of times in that uh, series. They just completed in Cleveland against Nick Swisher. Now Joe Madden has been known for being a, uh, shall we say, forward thinker. He does some unconventional stuff. He is a little different. He's a tad. But in a good way. The 3 1 pitch. Drill down the right field line, but foul. Way out in front of that one of the upper deck. And a souvenir. 3 2 on the Prince. Joe Mann, the last couple of years, has had to win games really with a subpar offense in terms of talent on paper, but his pitching and defense typically has been a good recipe although they weren't all that good defensively last year. They are much better in that respect this year. They've won 90 games in four of the last five years. Only a couple of other teams have done that and that would be the Philadelphia Phillies and also the New York Yankees and their payrolls are a lot higher than the Tampa Bay Rays. Three and two. Popped him up foul heading back to the seats. For whatever reason this year Prince has been doing his best work at least from a batting average standpoint against left handed pitching. And his numbers way up against lefties and against right handers not as good obviously as he's doing against uh, the lefties. Yikes three fifty nine.
Here's another pop up foul back out of play. Well, all of a sudden, what appeared to be a quick inning for Matt Moore is now a 25 pitch inning. Two out single by Cabrera. And Moore again ready with the 3 2. Runner going again. And a line drive, base hit to left field. He went the other way, and another hit against the lefty for Prince Fielder. That's what Prince will do with two strikes. He'll look to uh, drive something into the gap or hit the ball into the seats uh, before you get two strikes on him. But he finally got a fastball that was a little bit up, but he fought it out, and he's so strong, and he muscles the ball the opposite way. Two strikes, he does that a lot. So the Tigers have back to back hits and now Victor Martinez will stand in two really good at bats by not only Prince but also Miggy and to extend this inning for Matt Moore. Victor batting 230 but his career numbers against the Rays stand out 371 lifetime. And he looks at ball one. Matt Moore in his last start lasted only one inning because of almost five hours of rain delays in their game against Cleveland. He threw just 11 pitches and then didn't come back that night. That's in there for a strike one one. Miguel at second base is going to have to get a really aggressive secondary lead if he's going to score on a base hit to left field. Johnson has six assists already from that position. He's playing really shallow right now against Victor Martinez. Way inside, two and one. And the only other outfielder with more assists than Johnson is Rios of the. Chicago White Sox he has seven assists from his right field position. Well Victor trying to deliver a two out run here after a couple of base hits and this has become a lengthy inning for Matt Moore. This will be his 30th pitch. High fly ball medium depth in the left Johnson staring into the sunlight. And that's all for the Tigers no runs two hits two left. Detroit and the community since 1849. Ram trucks engineered to move heaven and earth, guts, glory, Ram. And by Stouffer Redbox Entrees, dinner made the way you'd make it. 
Back here at Comerica Park as we head to the top of inning number two and Sanchez facing Evan Longoria to lead it off. Longoria, Loney, and Jennings, the middle of Joe Madden's lineup. One ball and one strike on Evan Longoria. Exactly what you want to do to Evan. You want to start him out with fastballs, change up the way. And you want to go inside just for show. And then when to get him out, you got to go back away from Longoria. He's got some pop to left field, although he did hit a homer on Sunday to right field in Cleveland. That one is shot toward right field. Hit well. Torrey is on the run. Still going. Can't get it. A diving attempt. It'll go up against the wall, and Longoria is headed to third base. And he is in with a stand up triple. As Hunter trying to make a circus play out there in right. You have to go inside once Evan Longoria realizes that you're going to stay away. He'll simply go with that pitch and drive it the other way as he does right there. And Torrey Hunter nearly with a great catch in right field. Three base hit. Hunter nearly got there but just couldn't quite snag it. Second triple of the year for Longoria. Now James Loney will try and drive him in. That is the first hit of the ball game for the Rays. After a 10 pitch first inning with two strikeouts for Sanchez. Ball high and inside to Loney. Loney having a great year so far his first season uh, in Tampa and in 326 he's driven in 30 and he has seven home runs not known for his power uh, when he played for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Loney pops it up foul heading back to the seats and out of play it goes and they say that he's bending over a little bit more and crouching in the stands a little bit more than last year. Much more upright last season in Los Angeles because he's down a little bit lower using his legs and generating a lot of power. Loney seven homers Longoria Johnson each with ten. And Matt Joyce with ten as well their home run leaders. The Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting reports on Mr. Loney and uh, last season only six home runs this year. The numbers way up in the average column the home run column and certainly on pace in the RBI column from the home run standpoint. That's something the Dodgers have always felt uh, that Loney could have done more of and that's hit more homers. Ball inside 2-2. Sanchez came into this one third of the American League in strikeouts with 89. He has two more already this evening. Desmond Jennings waiting on deck. And again, the 2 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, tipped it into the glove of Pena. One gone. Sanchez has three strikeouts so far in the game, all three strikeouts. Have come on the changeup, and that's something that he's done all season long. When he gets two strikes up against you, he's not going to give you a fastball. He's going to come with that changeup or that breaking ball, and that's one of the reasons why he has racked up so many strikeouts this year. One gone here is Desmond Jennings, batting 255 this year. Infield creeping in now for Detroit and a wave and a miss. Well, they took him out of that leadoff spot on May 27th, and his numbers have perked up a little bit. Uh, he was struggling when leading off uh, for Tampa. They will probably put him back in that leadoff spot once he uh, starts to swing the bat a little bit better in the spot that he's in right now. Now it's 0 2. Well, since being taken out of that leadoff spot, he is 9 for 19. Has a chance to drive in a run here, but he's behind in the count on one two. Lead off triple by Evan Longoria. That'll get back out of play. Sanchez's last start was in Pittsburgh. He was absolutely cruising along. And then all of a sudden the seventh inning rolled around. And before you know it, he had given up five runs. Way 
up and in one and two. Same thing happened to Porcello. A couple of days in Baltimore. And Porcello was cruising through six. And then in the seventh inning, he went out there, gave up a leadoff homer, and before he left, and he was on the uh, the hook for a loss. Yeah, Jim Leland took the blame for that. He saw the upcoming lineup and thought, well, you know what, it might be a good spot for a left-hander, but Porcello was only in the 80 range in pitches thrown. He wasn't going to take him out. That's drilled to center field. That'll get the run in. Garcia backing up. Longoria tagging up. And he will come in to score. It's a sack fly and an RBI. I thought Porcello handled that like a pro, though. He said Jim's not out there throwing the pitches. Uh, he said he didn't execute that pitch to uh, Chris Davis. It was a changeup that was up, and they had been throwing fastballs by Davis all series long. Could you imagine the backlash if he took Porcello out after six in that game? Sometimes you have to do that, though. Here is Luke Scott and his beard. Scott batting 244. Swing and a miss. I ask you this every year, so I will ask it again. What do you got on the spirit? What do you think? Well, my mom always told me if you don't have nothing nice to say, <laughs> it don't say it. That's the same answer you had last year. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> 0 and 2. This much I do know. He's not nearly as good against the Tigers as he used to be when he was playing for the Baltimore Orioles. He used to kill the Tigers when he played for the Orioles. That he did. Now the 0 2. One ball and two strikes. Here's what you're talking about. First 10 career games against the Tigers, over 500. Got to the point where he was sending a limo to the <laughs> uh, team hotel to pick up that night starter. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Making sure they got to the ballpark. <laughs> Safe and sound. So they could pick up a couple of knocks. Minimum. But they've handled them recently, though. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. It'll bounce foul. Sanchez had a 10-pitch first inning. This will be his 20th pitch of this half inning. A triple by Longoria. One out sack fly by Jennings. Scored him. And he got him. Strike three. Scott caught looking. Four strikeouts for Adamo Sanchez.
talking with Shannon Hogan. Hi, Mario. Yeah, you know, I don't get out here all that often during the games. It's a pretty fantastic view. If you don't get a chance and you're usually sitting behind home plate or up in the upper deck, take a chance to walk around the ballpark. There's really not a bad seat or a bad place to stand. My friends from Dearborn in Canada agree. And I have to say, when you're out here, you realize just how far these guys have to run to get a ball because that Torrey Hunter almost catch over here was right in front of us. And speaking of Torrey Hunter, I'm also roaming tonight. I have a good feeling. I feel like 300, the 300th home run, I don't know. I feel like it might happen tonight. So if it does, I'll be around. All right, I'm up for that. And if it does, we'll give you all the credit, Shannon. Okay, Thank you very good. much. Yeah. Well, she's, uh, she's out with the peeps out there in standing room only area. As the Tigers now come to the plate here in the second, it'll be Peralta, Tuiasa, Sopo, and Pena. That really is a great spot in the outfield. I mean, it's such a casual spot out there. Kind of lean over the railing, watch some Tigers baseball. I'm going to have to take a stroll out there one evening. I've yep. never gone out there and watched uh, from that vantage point. There's the 0 2. Lifted towards shallow left center. It'll drop in, base hit. I had an opportunity in 2005 during the All-Star game. I was out there with uh, the family, and uh, it was just kind of fun to hang out there, watch some BP, and eventually the game. Pretty cool area. The leadoff man out for the Tigers. It'll be Tuiasa Sopo standing in. Tuiasa Sopo's average up to 3.33. Tigers down by a run have the tying run on and Moore delivers a strike. Two for three in that series against the Orioles. Here's the 0 1. Make it 0 2 on Matt. How would you grade Tuiasa Sopo here? First two months of the season in his role and what he has been able to do. I give him an A. Very difficult to uh, do what uh, uh, Tuiasa Sopo has been able to do. You might get one, you might get two starts in one week, and yet come off the bench and do what he's done. Big home run in Washington against Dan Heron in a pinch hitting role, right? That one is driven to right center field. Jennings on the run, still going, not going to get it. It's up against the wall, and here comes Peralta rounding third. He's coming home, and he'll score. And Tuiasa Sopo gets it done again. Forget the A. Make that an A+. Plus. <laughs> Absolutely. That's his 14th RBI. Well, something had to give in the game. Moore came in outstanding. He is holding the American League hitters to the lowest batting average in the league. But the Tigers already with a few hits against him. Tuiasa Sopo goes down. And hits one to center field. And if Jennings can't catch it in center field, very few center fielders are going to catch it because he has tremendous speed in the outfield and covers a lot of ground. And the Tigers already had four hits in this game. Fourth double of the year for Tuiasa Sopo. It's a 1 1 game. Here's Brian Pena. He sends a ground ball to the right side. Nicely done. Tuiasa Sopo moves up. One gone. That is a harmless uh, ground ball to the second baseman, but he'll get a lot of high fives when he gets back to the dugout. Every last one of his teammates will meet him at that top step, led by the big fella, number 24. Tigers have a chance to get a run without the benefit of a hit. Pena gets the congratulations from his teammates. Infield coming in now for the Rays. Here's Garcia. Good pickup by Molina. Tough ball to pick up. Garcia batting 256. Had four hits on the road trip. Ball low and the count goes 2 and 0. Oh. Good hitters count right here. And it should more uh, challenge Garcia with a fastball. Run around third base. Make sure you get something that you can drive deep enough to the outfield. Doesn't really matter which direction. 
but deep enough to score to Yasa Sopo. Way inside 3 and 0. Garcia's already had some uh, memorable moments this year after being called up. He hit his first big league home run that came against Dallas Keuchel of the Houston Astros, and he also had that big three-run pinch hit triple against Minnesota. And he walked him on four pitches. That'll put him at first and third. First walk for more. And join us again tomorrow when the Tigers host the Rays. Coverage begins at six. With Tigers Live, Tigers and Rays tomorrow evening right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Here is Omar Infante. Omar struck out against Moore back in the first. Which to this point is the only strikeout that the Tampa lefty has. Last year, only you Darvish had more strikeouts among American League rookies. Darvish struck out 221. Moore struck out 175. There's a ball low, 1 0. Infante still has that average at a pretty healthy spot at home. It's at 368 compared to 234 on the road. Tigers have an opportunity to grab the lead here. He drives one in the air to right field. Chasing Joyce back to the corner. Runner at third will tag. Tui Asasopo will come in to score. Garcia, meanwhile, moves up as well. And Infante with a sack fly and an RBI. Just like that, 2 1 Detroit. Omar gets his 19th RBI. Two gone. Here's Torrey Hunter. Torrey bounced out back in the first. That skied foul down the right field line. Hunter has an 11 game hitting streak. In the month of April, he had a 12 gamer. Trying to drive in Garcia here with a two out hit. Big swing there, 0 and 2. Through the numbers during that 11 game streak, 341. And the 0 2. And should get back into the seats. Loney giving chase. Back out of play. Torrey last year was absolutely breaking against the Rays. He had 432 last year against Tampa Pitcher. In his final season with the Angels, who, by the way, were swept at home in a four game series by Houston. What? Angels are scuffling. Again, the 0 2. Checked it. There we go. We did not. Mike Everett down at first base. One and two. Missed high, two balls, two strikes. That is something that Moore will try to get the left handers and the right handers to do when he gets ahead of you with two strikes. He'll climb the ladder uh, with a fastball about 93 to see if he can get a swing and miss. Torney gets a piece of that one to stay alive. 
Hunter was uh, hit in the left elbow in Pittsburgh, so he wears that padding now on his left elbow, something that he had never done in his career. He also told Ryan Field that it's something that he thought he'd never do until he got hit uh, that evening, and he said that it was pain in the shoulder all the way down and to the fingertips. Never wants to feel that kind of pain again. Foul straight back. Well, Moore now has hit the 50 plateau already. 30 in the first, 20 in the second. And that is something that uh, Joe Madden has had to do a little bit more often this year than he has the last couple of years. He's had to dip into that bullpen quite a bit in the first couple months of the season. Moore has eight wins, which is one shy of the major league lead. And that bullpen not nearly as effective as it was last year. Time call now. Molina will head out to the mound. Well, Fernando Rodney certainly has not been nearly effective or as effective as it was last year. Jake McGee also struggled hard throwing left hand around that bullpen. That's good pitching coach right there, though, Jim Hickey. A lot of people don't talk about him, boy, but he has resurrected a lot of careers. Guys that went down to Tampa that weren't having great careers when they left there, they got some pretty good contracts. And again, the 2 2, it's low, 3 and 2. Joaquin Benoit would yeah. be one of those. Great example. He has just found a way to get it done. I mean, they're, they're bullpens year after year. And as you, you said, not household names. Have done a really, really good job. Cabrera lurking on deck. And so Moore would rather not get that far. 3 2 pitch. Boy, is Tory giving him fits. Nine pitch at bat so far. The next one, number 10 against Hunter. Moore started the game by getting two quick outs in the first, then gave up a couple of hits, and before you know it, he was throwing 30 pitches. Ball high, he ends up walking him. What an at bat there by Torrey. That'll extend it now to Cabrera, and here comes Higby. Second walk in the inning now for the lefty Matt Moore. Hey, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It is brought to you by Miller Light. So Jim Hickey now has a chat with Matt Moore with Cabrera coming up two men on two men out. And the Tigers have two runs in. There is nobody better in the game than with men in scoring position, especially with two outs. 577. With two outs. Ridiculous. We've got another opportunity here. I just love the way when he gets into that batter's box, how he just takes a deep breath and just gathers himself. He doesn't panic. And here is one guy that clearly slows the game down in big moments. 370 for the year now with his base hit back in the first. Ball high. And here's what Miguel does before he gets in that batter's box. Real deep breath. And just kind of gets himself locked in. He already knows what pitch he's going to get. And if he gets the one that he's looking for, he won't miss it. Way outside 2 0. Oh. I never ever really see Miguel sitting down around any of those televisions on the road or at home watching any video on the opposing pitchers. No, I don't either. Moore is about to walk him. I think Jim Hickey went out there and told him yeah. just that. Don't give him anything to hit. And the guy in the on deck circle had one of the at best at bats today against the Moore his first time up. 
three and zero. Fielder waiting on deck. And he walked him. Nothing to hit for Cabrera. He'll take his base on balls. That's going to load him up now for Prince. Fielder had a single his first at bat. And now with the bases loaded and two runs in. In Miguel's last nine walks, Prince Fielder is seven for eight, following Miguel Cabrera with one walk. In those nine plate appearances. That's pretty good. Strike one. That's uh, now Prince arguing that call. Yeah, that's off the charts good. Ooh. Way outside, according to Mr. Foxtrack. Well, Prince knows that because he stands right on top of the dish, and that was a fastball that he got strike one on. That would be more that Prince couldn't reach. The 0 1 pitch. Line drive. Base hit center field. Garcia scores. Hunter coming around. He will score. And Prince makes him pay again. Make that 8 for 9. With one walk in the last 10 plate appearances he's got after a walk to Miguel Cabrera. 2 for 2 off the left hander Moore here today. That fastball, way too much plate there. Right around the belt buckle. And Prince not trying to do a whole lot. Just a really good. Path to the ball with really good contact. Four to one Tigers now. That is their fifth hit. Key at bat uh, in this inning was that base on balls to Hunter. Moore came in with a 2.18 ERA and he's given up four already. And that was his 60th pitch of this ball game. 30 each inning so far. Ninth man to bat in this inning, Martinez. Strike call. One and one. Victor feeling that ball was high. Mr. Fox tracks agree. One ball, one strike. Foul back. So the Tigers, after giving up a run in the top of this inning, have batted around here in the second. They have scored four times, a couple of RBIs for Prince, one for Tuyas Sosopo, and one for Infante. But it was the Tory Hunter walk after a lengthy at bat that extended the inning. Here's the one two. Two balls two strikes. Johnny Peralta started this inning with a single. A while ago and he is on deck. That's hit the third a tough hop there for Longoria who stays with it and they will get the force big inning for the Tigers they score four and you're watching Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tires.
Arby's. Try Arby's new market fresh turkey bacon Florentine sandwich. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Back here in the Motor City where the Tigers now lead it four to one after giving up a run in the top of the second. They bounce back with four. And Prince Fielder had the big two run single after Cabrera was walked. And now Sanchez with the lead goes to work and faces Jose Molina. Yudel Escobar and Matt Joyce. Molina batting 250. Ball outside. 2-0 the count. Sanchez gave up a triple to Longoria in the second. He scored one batter later on a sack fly. Fouled straight back 2-1 on Jose Molina. Nine game hitting streak right now for the Tampa catcher. His career high is 12 in a row, but he did that a long time ago, 2006. So this is his longest streak in a while. Bouncing ball foul. Two and two. Molina came up in the Angels organization, also spent time with the Yankees in Toronto. Here's the 2 2. Sanchez goes full now, 3 and 2. Joe Madden, the manager, also spent a lot of years in the Angels organization in the minor leagues as a coordinator and later in the major league. Bouncing ball to third. Cabrera backs up. He knows he has plenty of time. And one out. Let's go back to the studio now. We check in with Mickey York. Well, the top four teams in the American League East are separated by just three games. Boston right now the current leader. And Tampa just three out with Baltimore and New York bunched in between. Here is Yunel Escobar. Swing and a miss, 0-1. How do you see that American League East shaking out? I mean, literally, any one of those teams I think could win it. Yeah, this team right here. If they continue to pitch and they continue to put the ball in play with runners in scoring position as they have all year long. Runners right back to the mound and Sanchez handles that one. They're going to be right there. And we just saw that uh, Baltimore Orioles team. I don't know how far they can hang with their starting rotation. Uh, we haven't seen uh, some of the other clubs, but uh, I like this Tampa team. Baltimore has to be looking for some starting pitching, don't they? It's hard to find them. It's hard to go out and, and make some deals. Uh, especially if you're Baltimore because whoever they want to get it's got to be a, a front of the rotation kind of guy and they're going to ask for some of their best prospects and I don't think that Baltimore is ready to do that yet. They might change their mind at the trade deadline however. Matt Joyce looks at ball one. They got a couple of guys we saw Gosman the other day and uh, Bundy is in the minor leagues. Who could be uh, answers in the future though. Here's the 1 0. You, you got to be careful here to Matt Joyce. 2 0 count. Already 10 homers this year. And nine of the 10 have come against right handed pitching. 2 and 1 of the former Tiger who broke into professional baseball with Detroit, spent four years in the organization. Part of one year in the big leagues with the Tigers. And he drives one toward right center field, and Garcia not going to be able to get this one up against the wall. You cannot throw a fastball by Matt Joyce in that count. Two balls, one strike. And he's got that pretty swing from the left side, looking for the fastball. Sanchez missed up, and he absolutely clobbered it in that right center field gap. That ball was smoked. Two out, two base hit. The second extra base hit of the game for Tampa. Here's Ben Zobrist. Ooh. 
Little chopper slowly first base side. Annabelle will make the play and tag the runner in the inning is over. No runs. They get a double and strand a man. We go to the bottom of the third here in the Motor City and a great day for baseball. And all fans are invited to stick around and enjoy a fabulous post game fireworks display. It's courtesy of Pepsi. If you'd like ticket information, call 866 66 Tiger or check it out online at tigers.com. You don't want to miss the fireworks here. An outstanding show every Friday night. Tigers have a 4 to 1 lead, four runs, five hits for Detroit, a run on two hits for the visiting Tampa Bay Rays. They start a three game series here. And the Tigers trying to bounce back after a rocky road trip. Tigers coming into this game here tonight, 17 and 9 at home. Tigers went 1 and 4 on the trip and very easily could have went 5 and 0. Very easily went 5 and 0 on the trip. Yeah, with a couple of key hits here and there. So here is Peralta who led off the second inning. It'll be Johnny, then Tuiasa Sopo, and then Pena. Facing the lefty Matt Moore. That's drilled to left field. And that ball is going to get up against the wall. Johnson gets it back in and will start things off with a double. Well, they are not afraid of Matt Moore. Well, they know that Matt Moore likes to throw first pitch fastballs. And of course, the Tigers have a really good fastball hitting club. Peralta. Hitting 335 before this base hit right here gets a cookie fastball inside, pulls his hands in nicely, clears the hips uh, out of the way, and drills that ball to left field for a stand up double. He had thrown 64 pitches coming into this half inning. Now, Tuias Sopo, who doubled in a run in the second. And Matt batting 345 now, another RBI chance. Ball one. RBI is in the Tigers' second, to Iasa Sopo, and Fonte, and two for Prince Fielder. Two and all the count. Matt Moore was highly decorated coming out of the minor leagues. In fact, back in 2011, he finished second to Mike Trout for the Minor League Player of the Year award. Here's the 2 0, and it's low. Three balls, no strikes. Ryan Pena waiting on deck. Five three ball counts already for more in this game. 
Has to have Joe Madden a little bit concerned early on here. There's a strike. Three and one. He lost him ball four. So the third is starting much like the second did for more. First two men reach. Seventy pitches, forty one of which are strikes. So the ratio is not all or has not been all that good. And now here is Pena with nobody out. Tigers have had men on base all night long. Showing bunt. Ball one. Tommy Brookins running through the signs down in the coaching box at third. Pena's ground ball advanced a runner back in the second inning. Pulled it back, and the ball missed inside. Two and zero. Oh. If you're paying and you're still bunting here, two balls, no strikes. You got to get it down toward Longoria, the third baseman. And you want to keep it away from Loney, the first baseman. He has no responsibility. You can see him right here. He will really be crowding Pena on the next pitch, and he's also a fearless thrower. So uh, you don't want to bunt it toward him. Way outside, he's not bunting it to anybody. Moore can't throw a strike. Three and zero. Oh. And the Tigers' offense has stressed out Matt Moore here tonight. He came in with an ERA of 2.18. Here comes Hickey again. And so they'll have another power on the hill. And while they do, we tell you to vote for your Tigers McDonald's Player of the Game. Presented by the new Detroit Tigers Eminem McFlurry only at McDonald's using your cell phone text Tigers followed by a space then the players uniform number to three seven three three eight or vote online at Fox Sports Detroit dot com. Three and oh with a double and a walk already recorded in this inning. Garcia the number nine hitter waiting on deck. Peralta let it off with a double to Iasisopo is walked. No sign of bunt there and he takes ball four. That will load the bases. Last season, the Rays starters led the major leagues with a 334 earned run average. This season, so far, uh, the ERA at 423. And that's why Joe Madden's had to dip into that bullpen early and often on many occasions this year. And so the call has been made to the bullpen to get Alex Torres warming up. And Garcia takes ball one. Five walks already for Matt Moore. His career high is six. That was earlier this year. He did that against the Texas Rangers, and his club won the game. Well, Tigers have a chance to blow this one open early. There's a strike, one and one. He averages about 17 pitches per inning this season. He's averaging 38 tonight. Driven back out of play. No, he doesn't look like the guy that uh, 
and it came in pitching some of the best baseball in the American League. Left handed or right handed. Then again he really hasn't seen an offense like this all year either because. And very few teams have an offense like this. The one two. Grounded foul. Well Moore is the youngest pitcher to start a season eight and zero, oh, exclusively as a starter since Jared Weaver was nine and zero oh back in 2006. That's the type of season that he has gotten off to or the type of start I should say. Won 11 games last year with a really good ERA. And the Rays thought so much of him that they signed him to a five year deal after only three big league appearances. He's having one of those nights tonight, though. We'll see if the Tigers can make him pay here. And it's drilled to center field. That's going to be a base hit. One run will score. Tuiasa Sopo will stop at third. And the Tigers get another run in. They lead five to one. Tigers hitters have been very, very patient today against Moore. They have made him throw the ball over the plate, and when he has thrown it over the plate, uh, they've made some really good contact, and that's why they lead in this game five to one. And there is still nobody out as Garcia gets his ninth RBI of the season. Here's the top of the order in Fonte. Omar cuts and misses own one. Garcia has nine RBIs in 17 games. Omar had a sack fly back in the second. Ground ball foul, third base side, 0 2. Fonte came in batting 314 over his last 36 games. He had tailed off a little bit in the month of May. After a terrific April. The 0 2. Molina down to smother it. Well, one of the responsibilities if you're catching, you call for the breaking ball. Uh, you've got to get down, soften the body, make sure you keep that in front of you. And you can't do it any better than Molina did it right there. Here's the one two. Two balls, two strikes. Jim Hickey on the phone, finding out where Torres is in his warm up session. Well, they can't stay with uh, more much longer, not in this inning. The 2 2. Rolled foul. Every starter will have a start like this, regardless of what his numbers were coming in. 8 0. The ERA was exceptional at 2 1 8. And the opponent's batting average against him was the lowest in the American League, but it happens. Verlander had one of these too. Well, for more this year, one of these starts was a four run start. That was it. He's already given up five in this game, and he's not even through three innings. He only gave up a total of four runs the entire month of April. Pretty amazing start. Hunter waiting on deck. You wonder how much the effects of having to be shut down in his last start because of the rain delay he's had. He pitched only one inning. Three and two on Omar Infante. And he walked him with the bases loaded to force in a run. Six base on balls ties a career high, and that is going to be it. It's Joe Madden. Makes his way out to the mound to make a pitching change. It is courtesy of Wallside Windows. One of those nights for Matt Moore. It's 6 1 Detroit.
Tiger has put a four spot on Matt Moore, the starter tonight. And for the Tampa Rays, it was Tui Asasopo doubling in the right center. And he drove in one, and Fonte had a sack fly. He also played in one, and then Prince Fielder just gets it done. After a Miguel Cabrera walk, he singles up the middle, drives in two. And then you have Garcia Infante driving in a couple here, although Infante got his the easy way on a bases loaded walk. Well, the numbers for Matt Moore tonight, two plus innings, seven hits, six runs. However, all three of the base runners still belong to Matt Moore, whose ERA, by the way, at least right now, has ballooned to 2.95 from 2.18 coming in. But we'll see how many more score. And that is up to the new pitcher, left-hander coming in. That would be Alex Torres. Yeah, only a handful of games uh, so far for Torres. He does not have an earned run average. Over one strikeout per inning in eight and a third so far. He's only walked three in. That opponent's batting average is pretty special down there at the bottom against him. So Torres will go to work against Torrey Hunter with the bases loaded and nobody out. Moore gave up a double, a single, and three walks in this inning. Infield coming in now for the Rays in a 6 1 ball game. Ball one outside. And Torres is a three pitch pitcher. He has a fastball that has a little run to it, a little sink. He'll get up to 92 with that pitch. Also, a pretty good change up in a slider that he likes to throw to the left handed batters, not so much to the right handers. Ground ball third base side Longoria comes home for one that's all we'll get. Hunter is aboard in the fielder's choice. It's the first out of the inning. It's going to bring up Miguel Cabrera. Last time he hit in this type of a situation the base is loaded. He was circling the pillows in Baltimore his fourth career grand slam. That was the inning in which the Tigers hit three straight homers. They eventually loaded the bases and the slam by Cabrera. 420 career with the bases loaded. Ball one. And Torres is also one of those guys that likes to pitch backwards in a situation like this. A one ball, no strikes. Very seldom will he throw a fastball. He will throw you a changeup to the right handed batter. Torres, 25 years old, was recalled from their Triple A team Durham on Saturday. 2 0 the count. Can't think of a much more frightening situation than facing Cabrera with a base load. Well, it's hard for you to get him out in the strike zone. Very few have you know, the kind of stuff they can get Miguel out in the strike zone. He might chase every now and then, but you can't get him out in that zone. Way high. 3 0. I think Miguel wants to pick up a few of these runs that are out there. If he gets a fastball right here from Torres, three balls and no strikes. Uh, he might want to pick up a couple stakes. Think he'll go? I think so. Let's see. He's got to get the pitch first. Here he comes. He's taking it's a strike on the outer edge. Fielder waiting on deck. Tigers have added two to the four spot they put up in the second. Swing and a miss. Three and two. And a good change up there by Torres. And a 3 1 change piece at 83 miles an hour. A little fading action away from Miggy. Full count on Cabrera. One out, bases loaded. Two runs in. Into the glove for strike three, and Cabrera is out. 
Two gone. Change up on the 3-1 pitch. He came back with a 3-2 fastball that Miggy was a little bit late on. That's a four-seam fastball right there. That's a straight one right over the top. <laughs> Miguel looked surprised, didn't he? Everybody else is probably surprised too. Well, two outs, and here is Fielder. Two for two for Prince, and he picked up two RBIs in the second. He's got 46 driven in now. Inside 1 0. Six base on balls for the starter Matt Moore. He is knocked out here in the third. And three of those walks came in this inning. Tigers have Garcia down at third base. Infante is at second. Torrey Hunter is at first. Checked it. Strike called. 1 1. You don't see that very often. Change up from a left hander to a a left handed batter with a change up, but uh, Torrey has enough confidence in that pitch to throw it there to Prince Fielder. Here's the 1 1 outside, two balls and one strike. Moore threw 86 pitches before departing here for Torres in the third. Now the 2 1. Line foul, 2 2. Tigers have six runs, seven hits. Rays have one run, two hits. Tampa came into this game having won seven of their last eight, and they were a season high six over the 500 mark. But Matt Moore tonight was anything but the type of pitcher he was coming in. Two and two on fielder. Checked it. Did he go? Yes, he went around. Tim Wilkie rings him up, and the inning is over. So the Tigers will settle for a couple of runs, but they now lead 6 1.
the ballpark and let's check in with Shannon Hogan with a special guest. Yeah, I found Nagamik and Sue and some of the rest of the Detroit Lions taking in the game and they're in Justin Verlander's suite, I might add. So I have to ask, you and JV, you buddies now? Yeah, we've been buddies for a while. We've uh, taken part and gone to some Clipper games in L.A. and uh, obviously hung out around here in, uh, in Michigan and Detroit. So uh, he's a good friend and a uh, great guy, obviously, let me borrow his suite for the night. We saw you at the Red Wings game at the Joe. We mm -hmm. saw you in the Zamboni. Now you're here. What is it about being a part of this Detroit sports atmosphere that you kind of just want to support the other teams? Uh, it's fun. I mean, just the relationships that we've built, um, just obviously with Justin. Uh, Miggy came into my game. And uh, just being able to exchange and hang out with each other and support each other when we have our opportunities. We're in the offseason, so I can come watch them. They're in their offseason or getting ready for camp, and they can come see us. All right, I know you're an athletic guy. Uh -huh. I've seen you dive now. I've seen you play football. How about baseball? Do you think you're a better diver, football player, or I'm going to go with football as the best, but or baseball. So diver or baseball player? Uh, I think I'd have a little bit more luck in baseball. Um, I think I could, uh, I'd probably have to come out here for some batting practice sometime and, uh, and show off and, uh, and put some work together. But uh, no, I enjoy it. I love football, obviously, and that's a, a great God-given talent. And, uh, but I love basketball, too. Lots of pissing games early in, the, uh, in, our, in our in towards the end of our season. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. You guys, enjoy the rest of the game. And I will say, if you're going to take BP, probably don't go with Justin. <laughs> Maybe go with Miguel Cabrera. I'm sure he'll help you out. Yeah, no, Miguel definitely helped me out. But thank you. All right, thanks so much. Guys, we'll put it back to you. All right, Shanna, thanks very much. I would guess that if uh, Ndamukong Sue took batting practice and made contact, he'd hit one about 500 feet. He uh, probably would if he made some contact. I was watching him uh, play in a celebrity golf event, and he used his driver and he, when he made contact with the golf ball <laughs> the head of the driver flew off the driver that's that. how strong he is <laughs> one out here as Sanchez gets the fly ball from Kelly Johnson well it's great to see the other athletes they don't have a shift a shaft stiff enough from a golf club standpoint driver standpoint for him to hit it here is Evan Longoria with one out a 1 0 pitch from Sanchez is a ball outside. Two balls, no strikes. Longoria had a triple back in the second, and then eventually scored the only run the Rays have in this game. As Anibal now has thrown 50 in this contest, the 2 0 pitch went around. 2 and 1 on Longoria. I guess they got OTAs going on as far as the, uh, the Lions are concerned, and, in, and every other team in the NFL. Organized team activity. And they're telling me that's what that stands for. Did you know that? See now, did you know that? I did, but don't give away the secrets. People would have thought you knew that no, by yourself. It's all good, man. It is all good. I like taking care of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Well, hockey just ended, and uh, the football guys are back in town. They are indeed. Lions season will be here soon. Here's the two-two. Drill to center field. Garcia drifting back. Two gone. How about some trivia? Courtesy of AT&T, our trivia question is upcoming. Here it is. Who were the last two teams to bat 240 or less and win over 90 games in a season, 90 or more in a season, and bat 240 or less for the year? Last two teams to do it. Rays certainly have a chance to win 90 games this year. Here's James Loney. We've got a couple guys on the DL who are really good pitchers, Neiman and Price. Currently on the disabled list. They traded away a couple of really good pitchers too, in James Shields and Wade Davis to the Kansas City Royals. Foul tip into the glove, which kind of gives you an idea of the depth uh, that they had in their starting rotation. David Price is on the disabled list. They say he might start uh, pitching toward the uh, tail end of June with that lat problem that he has. Initially, they thought it was a tricep injury with uh, David Price, but it was later Gosh. diagnosed as a lat problem. Shields and Davis go over to Kansas City. Will Myers was the headliner coming back the other way, the number four prospect, according to MLB.com. Jake Odorizzi, a uh, bright pitching prospect as well. They gave up a lot. Yeah, but in order to acquire a bat like Will Myers, who many feel 
is going to be an impact middle of the order guy in the big leagues for years to come. Yet the Royals have not been significantly better. They're six and a half out, and they're 23 and 31 in last place in the Central. That young nucleus of offensive players, after having a, a one or two really good years, those young kids are really struggling. Only six and a half back. Yeah, top to bottom, it's still bunched up as well in the Central. Maybe not as much as the East, but certainly. In the central as well. Jim was talking to uh, John Keating uh, today, and he was talking about the fact with the bats the Tigers have and some of the starting pitching that they have, their numbers should be a lot better in the wins and loss column. Loney given time. Wasn't sure that he was given time. Two balls, two strikes. Sanchez and the Tigers lead 6-1. In the air to right field, here comes Torrey on the run. He'll play it on one hop. It's a two out single for James Loney. And the Rays have picked up just their second hit, actually, their third hit. They have a double, a triple to go with the single. We'll keep the inning going now, and it's going to bring up Desmond Jennings, who had a sacrifice fly in an RBI in the second. Yeah, Desmond's got some pop in his bat, and usually he likes to jump on that first pitch fastball when he gets it. He was up and he swings through it. 0 and 1. He has scored 35 runs this year, which is 10th best in the American League. He can really run, he can flat out fly. Strike called, and it's 0 and 2. Big shoes to fill. B.J. Upton signing that five-year contract to leave Tampa and go to Atlanta. B.J. really scuffling in Atlanta. Now the 0-2. I am really surprised at how much B.J. Upton is struggling over in Atlanta. I, I really am. I mean, I know he had had his ups and downs with Tampa, but just a tremendous amount of skill. Playing with his brother over there. Yeah, he strikes out a lot on base percentages low. Still playing every day though. Here's the one two. Missed it high two balls two strikes. Here's where Sanchez likes to go to either the slider. Or the change up and we well documented the fact that even though he is right handed and there's a right handed batter. He is not afraid to bury that change up down and in. We're going to go fastball this time though. And it worked. He struck him out swinging. Sanchez has his fifth strikeout of the ball game. We are headed to the bottom of the fourth.
Power Sports Network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, and shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. Fox Sports 1 coming August 17th. Tiger fans enjoying themselves tonight. They have watched their team race out to a 6-1 lead. They knocked Matt Moore out of the game early. And Victor Martinez will lead things off in the fourth inning. Martinez Peralta to Iasasopo. Alex Torres came on to finish up in the third. Got the final three outs. Moore could not get an out in the third and ended up walking six for the game before departing. Torres, as a matter of fact, had to get through Hunter, Cabrera, and Fielder and did so. A slap foul back out of play. No balls, two strikes. A real nice job by Torres coming in with the bases loaded and no one scoring. Which helped out the ERA for Matt Moore. It saved a couple of more runs from being tacked on. That's right. Here's the 0 2. Tigers have six runs, seven hits. The Rays have one run, three hits. First of three between these two clubs. And then Cleveland's coming in. Bouncing ball to the shortstop. It'll be a routine play for Escobar, one gone. I also want to remind you this Sunday the Tigers as they host the Cleveland Indians at 108 it's on field photo day take pictures of your favorite Tigers on the field prior to the game ticket information can be had by phoning 866-66-TIGER or check it out online Tigers.com chance to roam the field and take photos of your favorite Tigers and your favorite Tiger may be Johnny Peralta who stands in with a single and a double. Here's the 1 0. Ground ball to short. This time Escobar to his right. Johnny retired for the first time. Two gone. And that's five in a row set down by Torres. The 25 year old from Venezuela. There's Tui Asasopo. Double walk, RBI run scored for Matt. One ball, no strikes. Last 11 games, Tuiasa Sopo at 348. Doing a fine job off the bench for the Tigers. Here's the 1 1. Torres, pretty firm fastball there coming from the left side, 93 miles an hour. Not afraid to pitch inside with that fastball either. Wave and a miss, 2 2. Torres came over from the Angels in the Scott Casimir deal back in 09. Casimir has kind of re resurrected his career. That missed, and the count goes three and two. Casimir at one time was putting up really good numbers for the Rays. Torres, along with Sean Rodriguez, coming over in that deal. We'll get back out of play. Three two. Tiger has sent nine men to the plate in the second, eight men to the plate in the third. Here's the 3 2. Swing and a miss, and Tui Asasopo goes down. 
Six straight retired by the lefty Torres. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Tigers have the lead in this one. 6-1 is our score as we go to the top of the fifth inning here at the ballpark. And here's that question again, the AT&T trivia question. Who are the last two teams to bat 240 or less and win 90 or more games in a season? The last two were... The Rays last year and the Athletics last year. And that hadn't happened since 1972. There's a strike called. Luke Scott, Jose Molina, Yudel Escobar, 789 for the Rays as we start the fifth inning. Only three hits so far for Tampa Bay. Sanchez missed inside, one ball, one strike. The Rays came into this game having scored 282 runs, which was fourth best in the majors. In the past, it had been their pitching that had carried them, but this year the offense has perked up. They struck out a lot last year with runners in scoring position. And they had no problem really getting on base, but they had difficulty uh, with guys driving in runs. Yeah, they lost 351 total strikeouts when they decided yeah, not to bring Pena back and B.J. Upton. Both guys struck out a ton uh, with runners in scoring position. Upton in Atlanta, Pena in Houston these days. Here's the 2-2. Got him, strike three, and Scott has struck out for the second time. And they've got a healthy Evan Longoria this year who's driving in runs. James Loney also driving in runs. Kelly Johnson uh, driving in runs. And you can't spot uh, your four seam fastball any better than Sanchez spotted that fastball. Had a cool 94 miles an hour as well. Here is Jose Molina. I want one on Molina. Two forty seven batting average. And the 0 one from Sanchez bouncing ball back up the middle. Johnny Peralta has time. Two up two down. Top fastball so far tonight to by Sanchez all the way up to 95 miles an hour. He's gone as low as 80 with a changeup or could have been a breaking ball. And we think it's finity for those on a radar reading. Here is Yunel Escobar. 
Sanchez has now retired six of the last seven. Escobar hit one right back to the mound his first time up. Former Toronto Blue Jay and Atlanta Brave. He was acquired in a December trade. And Kyle Farnsworth, former Tiger, heating up. That one sails outside. Two and oh. Escobar came in six for his previous 12. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Way high, 3 0. Anibal has not walked anybody yet tonight, but he's in danger here. There's the strike. Only the third three ball county is gone to the top of the lineup Matt Joyce waiting on deck. Sanchez walked just one in his last start. That was in Pittsburgh. And he has walked one here. Number nine hitter Escobar draws the base on balls. Seventy seven total now for Honeyball. Here's Matt Joyce. Two base hit with two outs in the third, but he was stranded. His 10 homers are tied for the team lead. Strike called, and now it's 0 2. Joyce, after he left the Tigers, actually made an all star team. That was in 2011 when he finished with 19 homers, 75 RBIs. He got off to a great start that year. And the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Sanchez got him on three pitches. That is seven strikeouts. For Anibal Sanchez. You're watching Tigers Baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire. America Park and it's a Fox Sports Detroit prize pack Tuesday brought to you by Meyer. Text Meyer to 37338 to be eligible to win a fantastic prize pack that any baseball fan would love. Meyer math means savings that really add up at Meyer the math always works in your favor. 
And so the Rays have gone back to the bullpen wall side windows pitching change. Remember this guy? He still got a big fastball fastball still 95 miles an hour, but he hasn't been able to locate it so far this year prior 18 games. He's won two lost none, but the 7 11 ERA kind of tells the story along with the opponent's batting average against Kyle Farnsworth. Meanwhile Torres the guy he took over for re retired six in a row and he came out with the bases loaded nobody out in the third did not allow any other for the damage so couldn't ask for anything more than what Torres gave you. Pena will lead it off. Then Garcia then Infante. Facing Kyle Farnsworth. Strike one on Pena. And Farnsworth's got a couple different fastballs. Four seam fastball will get up to 95. He also likes to cut it, has a slider, and also throwing a split fingered fastball as well. 0 2 on Pena. Farnsworth is 37 years old now. He broke into the big leagues in 1999, way back when he was starting for the Chicago Cubs. A couple of stints in Detroit. One and two. Pena walking to ground out. And the one two. Bouncing ball right side. Zobrist will surround it. And Pena's out. One gone here in the fifth. Don't forget you can enjoy the fantasy road trip of a lifetime. July 5th through 7th, the Tigers play the Indians in Cleveland. It includes game tickets, accommodations at the team hotel, and more. If you'd like more information on the fantasy road trip, phone number is 471 2550. 313 471 2550. Here's Garcia. Bobby with a walk, a single, and an RBI. Bouncing ball to short. Escobar to his right. Plants throws. Got him by half a step. And Garcia run. He very nearly beat that out. Two gone. You know, Escobar has also played some pretty good shortstop this year for Tampa. They didn't have a good defense last year. He's helped uh, shore up the left side of that infield with Longoria. And it took a really strong throw to get Garcia. Good call. Two up, two down on a pair of ground balls. Here's Infante. Strike one. Omar's had a pretty good night. A sack fly to drive in a run. A base is loaded to walk to drive in a run. 20 RBIs this year for Infante. The 0 1. Make it 0 2 on Omar. Farnsworth got to Detroit in 2005 in 46 appearances, had six saves and a 2 3 2 ERA. Tigers dealt him to Atlanta in that 2005 season. Missed outside one and two. And the Tigers reacquired him from the Yankees for Pudge Rodriguez. That's outside two and two the count. Here's the two two offering. Driven to left field. Johnson back. He's going to watch this one go. Back into the bullpen in left field. It's a two out solo shot for Infante. Seven one Detroit. It's a 2 2 breaking ball, 84 miles an hour right down the middle, and Omar with a really short, quick, a compact swing drills it into the 
Tigers bullpen. Fourth home run of the year, third RBI of the night for Infante. Here's a ground ball again to short. Escobar surrounds this one, and his throw is scooped at first by Loney. Tigers get a run on the homer by Infante. Joined by Craig and his son Matt, you guys have started a new thing to give back to veterans. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the guests you brought today and the organization you have. Sure, my son and I started this all 32 and 17 back in the football season, where we took two wounded veterans to every single NFL stadium. We got a lot of people interested. It's branched into hockey, basketball, baseball. And we got two heroes with us today, uh, Andrew and Josh, and we, we're, we're so proud to be able to, to take them to these kind of events. And Andrew, I'm going to sit down with you really quick. You were injured overseas when you were serving this country, lost both of your legs, but it has been a pretty great process coming back and to be able to do something like this. I understand you've been to a lot of ballparks in the last few days. The past six days we're doing seven ballparks in seven days. It's been, really been a dream come true and to be able to do it with my wife. Uh, I know my other buddy he's getting a hot dog right now but we're, we're loving it. We're loving it. Josh we're thinking about you. He's up there getting a hot dog but you know what Mario it's really great what they're doing for our country and it's awesome that baseball is something that they can enjoy with their family and their friends and they're coming back and, and trying to recover from what happened with them overseas. I'll send it back to you. All right. Well, what a great project. Thanks very much, Shannon. That's a, an outstanding story. And, and again, you never know who you're going to run into in the ballpark. But uh, boy, that is a great project to help our wounded warriors as they come back protecting our country. There's a base hit for Ben Zobrist as he leads things off in the sixth inning. Shannon has a little bit more. Yeah, you know what, you guys, not every day you get to be down on the field for batting practice. I'm lucky I get to do it, but Josh, you were down there, and Andrew was down there, Josh and Andrew were down there. They got to meet Miguel Cabrera, Tori Hunter, uh, Victor Martinez, Alex Avila. You guys walked away with some pretty good swag to you. Jersey signed and bats, and you know what? The Tigers are so great about this. We talk about Justin Verlander giving back to the veterans with his sweep, but it's something the whole team really embraces, and that they want to be able to go over and shake those guys' hands and say, thanks for what what you do and you know just enjoy the game while they're here. All right Shannon what a great thrill for everybody involved. And especially uh, I would imagine the players as well. Kelly Johnson is batting here with the leadoff single in the sixth inning. Tigers have seven runs eight hits and they have stranded seven in this game. The Rays have a run on four hits. They've left three. Johnson is 0 for 2 and he sends a ground ball to second base. Looks like it might be a 4 6 3. Two gone. Uh, this double play combination is one of the best in the American League. Look at the feed here by Infante. Throwing flat footed, he hits Johnny right in the chest, and Peralta takes very little time getting the ball on its way to first base because Zobras had no time in really disrupting. Him turning to there. 
We talk a lot about the offense this year of Peralta and also Infante, but they've been really good on the other side of the ball. There's a strike called on Evan Longoria. And that may be as important, Rod, when you consider last year the Tigers struggled to find any consistency at second base. Well, both guys really have a legitimate shot of making their second All Star team this year. They're not going to start. Cano, he will start, but at second base, but Infante, legitimate shot of making it again, along with Johnny Peralta. Here's the 1 1. Wave and a miss. One and two on Evan Longoria and you're absolutely right. They tried four different second basemen last year before finally pulling the trigger on a deal. It was a trade deadline deal with the Marlins that that got them Sanchez and Omar Infante Infante was just kind of a throw in at the time. Yeah Jacob Turner going the other way swing and a miss and Longoria is out the Tigers and Sanchez get through the six with a little bit of help from Infante Peralta and Fielder. If I remember correctly, so Teixeira coming back with a vengeance, and Cabrera is leading it off in the bottom of the sixth, and there's a strike call. Cabrera, fielder, and Martinez facing Kyle Farnsworth, who came on in the fifth inning, allowed a home run to Infante. A little bit low there, one ball, one strike. Tigers scored early against Matt Moore. They got four in the second, two in the third. Knocked him out of the game in the third. And they now lead seven to one. That'll bounce in two and one the count. Cabrera single walk strikeout. Seven game hit streak now for Miguel. Here's the two one. Two and two. Yeah, Mickey didn't like that one. And it really didn't look like a strike. We'll see though. Roll toward the shortstop out of the reach of Escobar. Second hit tonight for Cabrera. Lead off single here in the sixth inning. He hit this one uh, down around the shoe tops. A breaking ball, bottom of the zone. Didn't overswing, just kind of took a half swing uh, to be exact and was able to find the hole on the left side of the infield where they got a couple of really good defenders in Escobar and Longoria. 
The other pitching change here at the ballpark will step aside. Thing. Prince Fielder do up time now for the Farmers Insurance report card on the Prince. You know, we talked a lot about Miguel Cabrera, and deservedly so. He's done some special things this year, but let's not forget about the Prince, who is on pace for a really good year. You know, his numbers look like this just about every single, as far as the home runs are concerned. The RBIs will be a tad higher than they were last year if he continues to produce at the level. Uh, that he's produced at this year and he might score more than 84 runs if he continues to get that many base hits especially with uh, Victor Martinez behind him and Peralta because Victor for the most part really hasn't heated up yet. Meanwhile Cesar Ramos is the new pitcher for the Rays. He's got a fastball curveball slider and a changeup. Uh, 21st game he's been in this year 443 ERA for Ramos and yeah, the opponents hitting 250 against him. And so the lefty comes on to take on Prince Fielder. Two singles, two RBIs tonight for Prince. He tries to get ahead of the left handers with fastballs and then expand the strike zone with a mixture of curve, curve balls and sliders. There's the strike called on Fielder. And there's the fastball to get ahead. A couple of years ago, the Rays traded away Jason Bartlett over to the National League and the Padres. They got Ramos back in that deal. The other lefty that came out of the bullpen, Torres, faced six Tigers and got them all. Three on strikeouts. Here's the 0-1. Bouncing ball foul. 0-2 on fielder. Seven runs, nine hits for Detroit tonight. A run on four hits for the Rays. The opener of a three game series. Fielder now has 46 RBIs. Trailing only Cabrera on the Tiger Ball Club. Here's the 0 2. Oh, bouncing in. And all the way to the backstop. He's taking a wide turn. Cabrera headed to third base. Here's a throw. He never stopped running. And Miguel gets all the way to third on a wild pitch. The reason why Molina was so slow to go after this ball is because he was in a lot of pain. He ran back there to get it, but Miguel Cabrera just continued to run and then. Yeah, Molina comes up, fires the ball to third base, but not before Miguel slides in safely at third base. And I don't know where that got Mar Molina, but it got him pretty good. So much so that the trainer is coming out. Take a look at his left hand. Wrist area. It's 
So the Tigers will have a man at third, nobody out. It was a fastball in the dirt that he really didn't have time to turn his glove over and block. But you're not really looking for the fastball to bounce. He's still wincing in pain. Apparently, the rays are out of the magic spray, which makes the pain go away. A cold spray. <laughs> they must be fresh out. So Molina's on his own. Tigers lead seven to one. Now they have a man at third. Nobody out. Jose says, "I'm all right." Cabrera goes from first to third in the wild pitch. Infield is in now for the Rays. High fly ball center field. Jennings backing up. Cabrera tagging up. Catch is made. And that'll get the run in. Sack fly for Fielder. That's his third RBI of the night. He is just uh, an RBI machine along with uh, his buddy, his partner in crime, number 24. Well, the single, the wild pitch advances the runner two bases. 8 1 Detroit, and Fielder now has 47 RBIs. And a big hug for Cabrera to get to third base. Thank you for that RBI, he says. <laughs> I love you, man. That's a bear hug there. <laughs> Here's Victor Martinez. Victor is sold for three in this game and the only Tiger that has not reached base to this point. Anibal Sanchez usually does not get this kind of run support. Had he gotten this kind of run support all year, he'd have eight or nine wins already. Eight runs on nine hits. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Victor a fly out, couple of ground outs. He hit into a force in one at bat. And the 0-2. Ramos replacing Farnsworth to replace Torres. The starter Moore was taken out in the third tonight. Way inside, two balls, two strikes. Victor stays alive. Tigers got four in the second, two in the third. They have added a run in each of the last two innings. The second baseman on one hop, Zobrist has it. And Victor now is 0 for 4 tonight. Two gone. Well, Joe Madden is in his 39th season in professional baseball. He's been the manager of the Rays since 2006. And when you look at the longest current tenured managers in the major leagues, two of the four 
are managing this game. Uh, Joe Madden changed the culture in Tampa just as uh, Jim Leland did when he took over here in uh, 2006. Tigers are doing a lot of losing uh, before Jim Leland came to manage the Tigers. And since we showed you five managers on that list, that would be two of the five are managing this game. They're also very popular. Uh, Sports Illustrated did a poll a couple of years ago, and these two were one in three in popularity amongst the players. Madden finished first. Terry Francona was second. And there was Jim Leland at third. Easy to play for both of these guys. They just hold you accountable. And you come to work every day to do your job. And if you do that, no problem with them. There's a strike called one and two on Johnny Peralta. Jim was asked before the game today, though, about Joe Madden because they are so different in their styles. Madden will do some wacky stuff. He has the dress up days when they go on the road and he'll do some uh, different things in the clubhouse. Jim is more old school. And Jim said, well, he's 10 years younger than me, so he's more of a free spirit. Here's the one two. Got him strike three. Inning over, Tigers get another run. Jim Leland's Tigers lead Joe Madden's Rays. Eight to one. So far tonight, middle of the lineup, Rod, doing its uh, its thing again. You got Cabrera and Fielder. Well, Fielder just about every time there's somebody on the base pass, he's driving them in. And Miguel two for two, a couple of harmless singles, and Fonte's got three RBIs as well. So there's some nice distribution up and down uh, the lineup today as far as guys having success. Prince in the ball game tonight. Sack fly, two singles, three RBIs. Tigers lead right now 8 1 as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Cabrera's heads up play getting from first to third provided that RBI chance in the last half inning for Prince. Sanchez back to work. He had thrown 90 pitches after six innings and he goes to work here in the seventh facing James Loney, the former Los Angeles Dodger, former number one pick of the Dodgers. Loney takes the ball low, 1 1 to count. Single strikeout tonight for Loney, who came in seventh in the American League with a 326 batting average. It's at 328 right now. Drops in a breaking ball, 1 2. Two and two the count.
Sliced to third, but right there is Cabrera. Loney is out, one gone. Here's the peek at our charter high speed stat and where the Tampa Bay Rays ranked the last four years as far as stolen bases are concerned. This season they are 19th after finishing in the top five in the previous three seasons. And Desmond Jennings in the batter's box had 31 steals last year for Tampa. And he did so in 33 opportunities. He was caught just twice last year, but this year. He has stolen seven. He's been caught five times already. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. That's why they'd like to get him back into that leadoff spot. It's nothing like having a guy at the top of the batting order that when he does get on, uh, he can disrupt the attention of that starting pitcher. Just by him being on first base and the threat of being able to steal a bag. Checked it. It looked like he went. Ooh. Mike ever disagrees. One and two on Jennings. Sanchez started the windup. Jennings given time. Sack fly and a strikeout for Desmond tonight. And the one two. That's a swing and a miss. Sanchez just straight dealing today. Got all his pitches working, but what's new? Uh, for Anibal. Fastball spotted at 95. Change up outstanding. Here's a breaking ball here that just falls off the table. This guy can pitch. I mean, really pitch. Nine strikeouts. And he really hasn't needed a whole lot of pitches uh, to get those nine strikeouts. Luke Scott. Ball one. One double O, a hundred pitches for Mr. Sanchez. You see his totals by inning. He just loves pitching here at Comerica. The number's really good. He showed you those at the top of the broadcast tonight. And they're getting better and better. He needs one more strikeout here tonight to give him his third double digit strikeout game of the year. Won't soon forget the 17 punch out game he had against the Braves. That'll get by Sanchez. Barehanded play by Infante. Scott is out, inning is over. It's a one, two, three inning here in the seventh as we go to the stretch. All Tigers tonight, eight one. First batch of numbers are in for the All-Star voting. With more on that, let's join Shannon Hogan. Yes, everybody very excited about the All-Star game. Even pause. Pause has been
been voting nonstop. Don't you worry. But the fans at home also need to be voting. We want to show you some of the results that have just come in yesterday. Miguel Cabrera in first place there. Tori Hunter also in first place for the All-Star voting. And the other Tigers at the infield there, Johnny Peralta, Omar Infante, and of course, Prince Fielder also in the top five for their uh, position for All-Star voting. But you need to get out there and vote. There is plenty of time. And you know what? If Miguel Cabrera gets voted in as a starter, that would be the first time ever. I don't know how that hasn't happened yet, Mario and Rod, but somehow it just hasn't happened yet. Of course, the game is on Fox. That'll be at 8 p.m. on July 16th. I just had to check my notes for that. July 16th, 8 p.m. on Fox. You're not going to want to miss it. It's always a great event. All right, I'll send it back up to you guys. All right, Shannon, thanks. I am going to go out on a limb here and say that he will be the starting third baseman for the All-Star game this year. At least I hope he will. Well, I hope he is. I sure do. Right now, he's a leading vote getter as far as anybody uh, that has gotten votes for the American League. Matt Tuiasa Sopo leading it off here in the bottom of the seventh. Last year, Adrian Beltre was the starter for the American League at uh, the All Star game in Kansas City. How about Tory Hunter? Right? Yeah, now, he is a starter. Good for Tory. You know the thing about uh, Tory Hunter, and I heard John. Uh, Paul Morosi say this today, and I agree with him. Here's the 2 1. It's the fact that he's been with Minnesota. He's also been with Los Angeles the Angels. And it's very rare for a player to leave a couple different places on good terms. But he has left both of those places on really good terms, and no doubt, probably getting some votes from the fans in Los Angeles and Minnesota. That is a great point. And uh, I think, yeah, that explains a lot. Fan favorite really in both of those spots certainly in Minnesota where he broke into the big leagues but even in the five years he spent with the Angels and we even went back to Anaheim earlier this year everybody was there to greet Tory. he had a standing O just about every time he went to the plate in Los Angeles that entire weekend still sitting on 299 home runs the next one will be the 300th which would be a milestone for Tory. Two balls, two strikes on Tui Asisopo. We're in the seventh. Tigers leading this one eight to one. And the two two. Three two on Tui Asisopo. Pena then Garcia to follow. And this night, tonight, aside from the offense, has belonged to Anibal Sanchez, who's given up one run on four hits. Full count pitch. Grounded toward third foul. And a rare off night for a Tampa starter tonight, Matt Moore, who came in eight wins and no losses. Outstanding ERA. He had held the opponents to the lowest batting average of any pitcher in the American League, but today just was not his day. Luke Baconin warming up. Well, I think he said it best. Even the best have one of those games every now and then. And tonight it was for more. There's ball four. Leadoff man on here in the seventh. That's the third time tonight that Tui Asasopo has reached base. And he's going to depart now as Don Kelly comes on a pinch run. And bring up Pena. Pena tonight has a walk and a couple of ground outs. Ball one. Ryan's first ground ball came with the runner at second base. He hit one to the right side of the infield to advance the runner to third. One ball, one strike. More action in the Detroit bullpen along with Luke Pacone and Drew Smiley is heating up the left hander. Now the 1 1. Sky in the air, center field. Desmond Jennings cruising over. 
One gone. You know what happens as soon as the game ends. Our coverage, well, it continues with Tigers Live, of course. You can hear from manager Jim Leland. The players will break down the game, show you all the highlights. That's coming up after this one is complete. Tigers Live immediately after our broadcast here, right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Here's Avi Sayil Garcia. Single walk RBI run scored for the Tiger center fielder. Oh and one. One ball, one strike. Do you know where Pico Rivera, California is? Pico Rivera? Yeah. California? No. That's where uh, Ramos lives. Pico Rivera. You were born in Cali, and I spent some time there, but I've never heard of Pico Rivera. I know an area on Pico that has a Riviera Golf Country <laughs> Club. <laughs> Well, it's on Pico Boulevard. <laughs> Better than I got, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> Mr. Ramos, born in L.A., lives in Pico Rivera. Action with San Diego in the big leagues in 09 and 2010 before he was acquired by the Rays. Parts of the last two years with Tampa. Here's the one two. Ooh, that one floats in nicely for strike three. Second strikeout for Ramos. 69 mile per hour breaking ball. And it dropped in very nicely by Ramos. Our crack staff informs me that it's in southeastern L.A. County. In Southern California. There you go. Here is Omar Infante. Infante homered in his last at bat. He has three RBIs tonight. The home run came against Farnsworth. And he bends away from a strike 0 and 1. Don Kelly, the pinch runner at first base for Tui Asasopo. Way outside, one ball, one strike. Tomorrow night, game two in this series. The Tigers send Doug Fister to the mound. And then Scherzer goes on Thursday, the day game. And Max will bring his perfect 7 0 mark into play on Thursday. It's drilled toward left field, sinking, base hit. And Fonte is having himself a day. Let's take a peek at our bell tire pitch by pitch. And this was back in the second inning when it was a really close game. There was two outs. Matt Moore was a starter uh, for Tampa at this time. And he threw Torrey a ton of pitches. Got ahead of him with two strikes. But Torrey just continued to foul off pitch after pitch after pitch. And eventually walked. And then Moore walked Cabrera on four pitches after this walk and Prince Fielder greeted him with a single up the middle to drive in two. That was a key at bat in the second inning by Hunter. Meanwhile Torrey trying to extend his 11 game hitting streak with a base hit here. Aside from the walk he's had three ground ball outs. 311 batting average now for Torrey. Two on, two out here in the seventh. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Torrey, a 12 game hitting streak in April, an 11 gamer, which began in the month of May. 
that he's trying to extend right here. Couldn't hold up. One and two. Brown ball back up the middle Escobar to his left. They'll get the force at second to end the inning. No runs. They hit a walk. Two men left. Here is our Comerica Bank game summary tonight. The Tigers all over Tampa 8-1. Matt Moore went two plus innings, surrendered six earned runs. He is in line for his first loss of the season. Meanwhile, Adabal Sanchez, what more can you say about his effort tonight? He was able to spot that fastball. He had a good breaking ball, outstanding chains up, and he has become really must-see TV. Every time Anibal goes out there, he gives them a quality start and puts them in a situation to win the game. Sure is. He has nine strikeouts in this one tonight. And he'll give way to Luke Pakonin here in the eighth. And Pakonin has a fastball that can get all the way up to 96, 97. He's got a nice little breaking ball, also a split fingered fastball that uh, he is gaining confidence with uh, each time uh, he gets an opportunity to go out there. Jose Molina leads it off. Tigers have another change. That would be Don Kelly. He is now the left fielder. Here's the 1 out. That'll get fouled down the right field line. One ball, one strike. Molina, Escobar, and then Joyce. We're in the eighth inning at Comerica. Tigers trying to win their 31st game of the year. Here is Pacona's 1 1. Two balls, one strike. Tiger bullpen ERA now is at 3.90. Drilled to center field. Garcia puts his head down, runs back. And he'll get there, one gone. Six straight Rays have gone down in order now as Jamie Wright begins to tune up for the Rays. They had to go deep into their bullpen tonight with the exit of Matt Moore happening in the third inning. Here's Dunell Escobar. Walking the ground out. Mm -hmm. 
One ball and no strikes on Escobar. That's a really good year as early in his career with the Atlanta Braves, but then he was dealt to the Toronto Blue Jays. The 1 0. And he's always been a guy, rather, where you look at his physical skills and you're really impressed. Yeah, he's a big shortstop. He's got some power. He's got a lot of flash at that position. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons why he didn't last very long in Atlanta. Hit hard to the shortstop on the backhand Peralta. Two gone. And Bobby Cox is uh, a player's manager for sure. And uh, he and Escobar, they just uh, really couldn't get on the same page. He had no issues in Toronto for the most part, but uh, that's one of the reasons why Toronto was able to land him. If you can't play for Joe Madden, you can't play for anybody in this game. Well, here's Matt Joyce with two outs. Two base hit back in the third, but did not score. He is one for three. Ball one. Some really good shortstops in the American League. Andrews comes to mind. Escobar, and the kid in Kansas City. Again to center field, straight at Garcia. And Pekonen has himself a one, two, three, eight. Nicely done. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth. Detroit and the community since 1849. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit. Well, the Tigers in good shape here as we go to the bottom of the eighth. They have an 8-1 lead. They have pounded out 10 hits tonight against the Rays. And on a nice night for baseball here in the Motor City, we have a new pitcher now for Tampa Bay. That would be the right-hander Jamie Wright. And Jamie Wright had spent his entire Major League career in the National League, his first tour of duty in the junior circuit. Uh, he has already been into 23 games this year. Really good. Uh, earned run average, 22 strikeouts, 11 walks, and opponents hitting only 194 against Wright, who has that real good sinker over the top curveball as well. So Miguel Cabrera who has seen uh, a little bit of Jamie Wright is five for 13 against him. Seems like every number we pull up on Miguel Cabrera whether it's two outs runners in scoring positions runners in scoring position overall what he does against opposing teams all the numbers are close to 400. Cabrera fielder Martinez facing the veteran right hander Jamie Wright. And by veteran, I mean he's been around a long time. He is an 18-year vet with his 10th major league team. 
but he has never pitched in the postseason. No active player has been in the big leagues longer without playing in the postseason at least once. And Cabrera takes a strike. 18 seasons. That's a lot of mileage on that right arm. It really is. And 10 teams as well. Deep left center field. Jennings, though, is going to get out there and it's going to die out there in left center. One gone. Well, just like we promised you earlier in the game, it is Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And here's our Miller moment back in the second inning after Miguel Cabrera four pitch walk against Matt Moore, the start of the Tampa Bay Rays. And Prince Fielder smoked one right back up the gut to drive in a couple of big runs early in this ballgame. Every time they walk McGill, he gets a base hit. He seems to take it personally. And he has come through quite a bit. That controlled aggression. Cabrera fielder each with two hits tonight. There's a high drive deep into right field. That ball is way back. Joyce will watch it sail. It is gone. A big night has gotten bigger for Prince. It's his 12th home run. It's one area really you can't pitch Prince Fielder. He only uses a 33 and a half inch bat. He chokes up on that bat. He stands right on top of the plate. So if you go inside, you can't be half stepping. You got to get it in there. And uh, of course, Wright didn't get it in there, and Prince hits it out of the yard. As opposed to full stepping. That's right. <laughs> 9 1 Detroit. You can't be half stepping. <laughs> Here's Victor Martinez. Nine runs on 11 hits now for Detroit, and Victor is still. Trying to reach base here. Every other starter has. Give Fielder four RBIs for the night. Martinez over four. Ball outside 2 0. I'm talking about Jamie Wright and his long career. It began in 96 with Colorado. He's been to Milwaukee to St. Louis to Kansas City back to Colorado San Francisco Texas just to name a few that's in for a strike two and one my bad it was his first spring training in the Grapefruit League I had him as pitching in for only one American League squad uh, right. but he had never been to spring training down in Florida every single year he had had spring training in Arizona. There's a base hit for Martinez. He'll join the party tonight. One out single. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. It's available for Android, iPad, iPhone, Blackberry 10 at bat delivers Tigers baseball with live audio. They've got bitch tracking. They've got stats. They've got news. They've got highlights and a whole lot more. Text at bat to 3-1. Eight to six. I don't know what it is with the Tigers offense, but boy, do they perform a whole lot better here at home than they do on the road. Well, we mentioned the numbers coming in. The Tigers have won a lot more here at home. They're about to go to 18 and 9 compared to 13 and 16 away from Comerica. Johnny Peralta, single double, two runs scored. Twelve Tigers hits now. Fell away. Zero oh two. The Rays will have Zobris, Johnson, Longoria when we get to the ninth. And right now it's an eight-run lead as Phil Coke starts loosening up.
And the 0-2. A little bit low and away. One ball, two strikes. That'll get away from the catcher Molina advance the runner Martinez will go to second base. Another wild pitch tonight for the Rays. Meanwhile two and two on Johnny. Secret confab going on in the mound right now. I just always get a kick out of this. Guys uh, covering their mouths with the gloves. <laughs> yes. You know how quickly somebody would have to come from the clubhouse <laughs> all the way down the uh, the concourse area up into the dugout to tell them what they're talking about. If they're reading lips right. It just seems like it could never happen. The 2-2. Two -two. Foul straight back. I first noticed uh, uh, pitchers doing this when I played in Japan. Really? And then when I came back to the United States, then I noticed everybody over here was doing it. But I did not notice it before I left to go over there. Every pitcher over there did it. It's so like in your day, nobody did it. I don't remember everybody doing it. Uh, anybody? No. We didn't have as many cameras. Well, you got yeah. so many different cameras, different angles. You got so many different things nowadays that they didn't have then. That's a good point. Foul away again. And your point is well taken about most clubhouses. They have to relay it down to the field. But on many of these new ballparks, they have televisions that are right behind the dugout where guys can go yeah. right in there and look at them. That they do. That's a good point. Video rooms. But for the most part, you would have to employ a lip reader <laughs> to, be able to, to be able to accurately decipher what the pitcher is saying. Or the catcher. Two and two. And that's going to get outside and low as Molina is able to block that one. Three balls, two strikes. Home run by Fielder. Martinez has singled. Tigers adding another here. They lead nine to one. An impressive start to this home stand. Prince Fielder's had an impressive game. Four RBIs. Drill to right field. That ball's hit well. Joyce going back. He'll turn on it. It's off the wall. They're going to hold the runner at third base. Martinez will head back. It's a long single. Not a good read there by Victor. And with one out, uh, you really don't have to tag up. What you want to do is you want to go halfway. And if Joyce does make the play, you can get back to second base. But what he did there, he cost Johnny an RBI uh, by not going halfway. Another hit for the Tigers, who lead 9 1 here at Comerica Park in downtown Detroit. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen. Shannon Hogan as well in the ballpark tonight. Mark Isofano is our producer. Brian Moss, our director. Here's Don Kelly's first at bat of the night. He came on as a pinch runner and then stayed of the game defensively. Little looper. Shallow left, and it's going to drop. Base hit. Martinez scores RBI for Don Kelly and it's 10 1 Detroit. Johnson tried to deke the runner down there Martinez. Runner on third less than two outs Donnie gets underneath it doesn't hit it as far as he'd like to but the job still uh, gets taken care of with an RBI and a base hit. Kelly makes it a 10 1 game. Here's Brian Pena. He 
He's taking all the way at strike one. Ten runs, 14 hits for Detroit. Fouled away, 0 and 2. Whole bunch of runs on the board tonight for the Tigers, but their big inning was the four run second off starter Matt Moore. And they would chase him with two more in the third. Jim Leland's offense coming alive here tonight, and he mentioned that uh, his team just didn't get enough runs on that last road trip. The 0-2, swing and a miss. Went after the breaking ball, two gone. I'm gonna bring up Garcia. Tigers, by and large, have done a really good job against the Tampa offense. In fact, the Rays have not scored more than four in any of the last 12 against the Tigers. And they'll need a big ninth inning to get there. In this one. Here's Garcia. In for strike one. Bouncing ball right side. Zobrist knocks it down. Going to have no play. Everybody safe. Tried to backhand that ball on the grass, couldn't make the play. And the way he's backing up on this ball, the only play he would have had would have been the second base. And I think he took his eye off the ball momentarily looking to get that force at second base. I don't think he gets uh, Garcia here at first base. Now with Garcia's speed, his only play was the second. And as I said, he took his eye off the ball. So they are loaded up now. There's a ground ball to short. Escobar will flip to second. They'll get the force there. And that is that. However, the Tigers had a couple more runs. First one came on the homer by the Prince. We go to the top of the ninth inning, and it is also last call time for the Tampa Bay Rays. Got a new pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. On the pitch now is the left-hander Phil Coke. Phil Coke pitching in the 17th game this year. He hasn't won a game. He's lost three. ERA is 6.06, 16 in the third innings. He has spent a couple of weeks on the disabled list with a 
sore growing, but uh, make no mistake about it, if this team is going to get back to uh, where they need to get back to, and that's the postseason, uh, then they're going to need Fields, who really pitched the way that he pitched the last couple of years after that bullpen. Cabrera is out of the game. Ramon Santiago will take over defensively at third. Three more outs to get for the Tigers here. They lead 10 to 1. Ben Zobris leads it off, then Kelly Johnson and Evan Longoria. Zobris in this ball game, one for three. And the first pitch of the ninth inning is down low, one ball, no strikes. Well, you can count on Hannibal Sanchez. And again, he did it tonight. He did yeoman's work going seven innings. Baconan pitched the eighth, and now Coke here in the ninth inning. In the air to right field, Torrey going back. One out. Sean Rodriguez will pinch hit. Rodriguez batting for Kelly Johnson. In for strike one. 93 mile an hour fastball from the Tiger lefty. Here's the 0 1. Rodriguez hit a two run homer off CC Sabathia on his last start in a game in New York on the 26th of May. Rodriguez is also a guy that hit for a lot of power when he was playing for the Angels in the minor leagues, but since coming to the big leagues with Tampa, really hasn't rediscovered that minor league pop that he once had. You no, know, Joe Madden was talking about how excited they were to get him in part of that. That was the Casimir deal, right? Right. And uh, because of the power numbers he had in the minor leagues, here's the one two. Fouled off the mask of Brian Pena. And meanwhile, we haven't talked about Pena very much and his defensive skills, but here he is once again catching another really good game. Cope will step off. Evan Longoria waiting on deck. And the one two. Two balls, two strikes on Sean Rodriguez. But Conan had a one, two, three eighth inning, a couple of fly balls and a ground out. Sanchez struck out nine more tonight. And the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Rodriguez is out of there. Coke with a 94 mile an hour fastball threw it right by him. So here's Longoria. Tripled and scored their only run. That was way back in the second. Ball one. Longoria last year played just 74 games because of a partially torn hamstring. Tremendous two way player, hitting over 300 this year. And sends a bouncing ball to second, which should do it. Infante gobbles it up, and the Tigers win game one in the series. It's a 1 2 3 ninth inning. The bullpen does the job. Six up, six down for Jim Leon. And a huge offensive outburst tonight. Prince Fielder had a big night for the Tigers. We'll have a lot more from the ballpark coming up.